Hello, and welcome to the installation of the Onyx Rip Center Muto Edition. Today, I will show you how easy it is to install, print, and cut to the Muto Expert Jet by using the Onyx Rip Center software. Before we start with the installation of the Onyx Rip Center Muto Edition, I would like to go through a couple of things. First of all, the Onyx system re requirements. Onyx runs on a 64-bit system. That means Windows 7, 8, or 10 is compatible. Please note that a Windows 32-bit system is not supported and therefore the software will not run on the C systems. No need for a special requirement regarding the processor. It could be an Intel or an AMD multi-core processor. The minimum requirement for the RAM, the memory, 16 gigabyte 32 or 64 is recommended please be aware of the fact the more memory you have the faster your system will run regarding the installation make sure that you're logged in as a pc administrator therefore you will not find any problems during the installation also make sure that you disable antivirus software the antivirus software active can install problems during the installation. Hi, and welcome to the Onyx installation RIP Center in Muto. We are going to show you the installation of the Onyx RIP software for the Expert Jet. First of all, make sure that you have installed your RED security dongle. And second, make sure your USB dongle with all the software that you need to install is attached to the computer. Simply go to the Windows Explorer, find your disk, Onyx Rip Center, and locate the installer file, which is called install onyx.exe. Double click the file, click install, agree with terms and conditions, Click yes, and your driver will be installed. The first thing what it does, it installs the driver for the hardware dongle. This allows you to have a driver for the system to start up the software. Without this dongle driver, not be working. Once that is installed, it will automatically pop up with a window where I do my rip stinter installation. Now be aware when I show you this, this window, it already pops up a couple of uh, drivers. Make sure that you don't install them from here. One of the reasons is here that this might be an outdated driver. And we want to make sure that we download a fresh driver from the website. So it will install it into my C directory Onyx 19. If I want to change this, I can just browse and change the directory. If you have multiple disks installed, Onyx will always look to the disk with the largest free space available. So if I would have a D drive with more space, it would actually state here D Onyx 90. Click install to continue. When their software is ready with the installation of the files, click Finish. Because we have not installed any printer driver, it automatically pops up to the printer install menu, where I see my installation printer drivers from the disk. What I want to do is I want to click on Download Manager and actually open up the Onyx Download Manager. This requires an internet connection. In here, you make sure that you have selected Onyx 19. We select Muto. And we select the printer that we're installing for. Now, 
let's say we are doing in 1682. Then I can choose my profiles. I have profiles in this installer for CMYK with three, four. So I can select those, I can select those, and I select those. And it will only download my driver. In this case, I click on download. It requires me, where do I want to put these files? Okay, let's browse and let's say, you know, I want them on my desktop. That's fine. Click on OK. And now it's going to download my driver, including any kind of profiles I have. If I don't have any profiles, please visit muto.eu for more profiles on this printer. Hit finish downloading and close. Now I can actually go into the browse and I can go to my browser on the desktop, select this printer driver, SR2, select it and hit install. Now the driver is being installed. When it's ready, click finish. Now the software will automatically be started. This is the introduction screen of when you have a MyOnyx account. You can go next, type in your email address and password, or hit cancel. Now, the first thing what the software will do is allow you to say, okay, where do you need to connect your printer? Do I have a TCP IP printer? Or do you want a print to file? Normally, it is a TCP IP printer. I hit configure, type in my IP address, hit test to see if it's valid, and hit OK. One more time, hit OK. Your printer is green, and now you're ready to start printing. Welcome to printing with the Onyx Rip Center towards the Muto Expert Jet 1641SR. I'm going to show you how easy it is actually to print a file to the Expert Jet. I have my Muto here. It's green, ready to go. I click Open. I select my file that I want to print. My print is already selected. I have a quick set, which is default, and I have another, another quick set called value cut. Well, I'm not going to use any cutting right now, so I'm going to use the default settings. I'll click on open, and the file starts to process. On the right side here, you have the settings. I have selected the PVC. 54-inch roll, and my jobs are printed individually. I can click on placement to see where do I want this, and right now the file is positioned in the middle. I click on OK. I can just highlight my, my job to see what's going on. I can double-click to change media groups, so, you know, I, maybe I've uh, chosen the wrong media, and I can add a cutter if I want and some other finishing marks. I just click on OK here and hit print now. And that's all there is. The printer will start to print. And once this one is ready, the file will drop down to the perfect area for reprint need, if you need ever need a reprint. Hi, welcome to printing with the Onyx Rip Center towards the Muto ExpertJet 1641SR and cutting a file on the value cut. First, what we have to do when we configure a cutter, we have to go to Manage Cutters. Here you will find all the cutters that Onyx is supporting. We choose the Muto value cut and hit configure. In these, Parameters, you can set your settings what you need for your cutter. You can, for example, set how far you want your image from the X margin or the Y margin. You can decide if you want to print intermediate, meter, intermediate marks 
when skewing happens. You can also select a barcode to be printed. If you want to print the Onyx barcode, you would have to highlight it here. Click on OK, click Done. Now we actually have to install the cut server. So I go to up here, cut server. It opens a different program and it now asks us to add a cutter. In this case, I'm going to go again to the Muto. And I choose the Muto value cut, click on OK. And I can click again on manage cutters, go in there and hit configure. And you see that I can now set up the drive for the value cut. I have to select how it is connected here. If I want to cut to a file, I can do this and set up and browse to the, the folder that I want. If I have a TCP IP, I can select the IP address or you know, cut to a folder or a Muto USB driver. I hit close, OK. Next step is we actually want to automate things that the automatically the, the value cut is chosen. We can do this in here in Edit Quick Set. As you can see already, I have a quick set that is there called value cut. I click on this one. And you can see that I've selected again my Muto value cut. And my cut path prefix is cut contour. So anything that has a cut contour in there will be seen as a, uh, a cut path. Click on OK. Click close. Now let's open up a file. Here is my expert. I'm going to choose now my value cut. I'm going to take the Muto print and cut and click open. It's now going to rip my file. This will take a minute. You will see the, the preview is already popping up. Um, what I can do here is your media setup, your inches, things like that. How wide is your media? And you see now this is ready. OK. Now I can double click. I can again see this, how my images looks like. I can also go to my job editor, and the job editor actually shows me my cut path. So this is a double check to see if everything is there. You can see oh, the lines are already appearing. Here's a setting called preview cut path. If I turn this one off, you will see that it's disappear. So we're good to go. We hit print. And because it thinks that we have changed something, it's going to do another check on the file before we actually are allowed to, uh, to hit the print button. Now, for example, I want uh, this file and I want instead of one copy, I want two copies. Click on OK. Here in placement print jobs individually, uh, that is what I've selected. I click on placement. I've said, OK, I want to print from the middle. And I have a space of two centimeters between that. Also, in version 18 is 18.5 is new that I generate a nest outline. So what I do, I will put an extra cut pad around these two items here. So I click on OK. I hit print now. So the file is now transferred to, printer, to the printer. The minute that I hit print file, there's also a file generated in my cut server. So if I go here to cut server, you see here, here's my, here's my actually file. So in here it says I have a cut contour and I have a cut contour too. So it looks like that the file actually had two cut contours in there. So this one and this one. But both are using the same cut pads. They're both using the default. And there's my trim box around it. I can just now hit just cut now.
about the fact that the cut server can be used on a different PC also. A cut server is not related to the dongle. It does not require any dongle. So if you have a cutter that is a little bit further away from your RIP PC, you can install the cut server on a different PC. Hello. I hope you're satisfied with your Onyx RIP Center view though. But did you know you can upgrade this software? I don't want to go too much into details, but your biggest benefit would be that you save in cost. By automatic adding bleed, grommets, marks to the file, you save a lot of time. Or what about adding a layer of white to your file automatic? Or no more issues with printing the correct Pantone color. In Onyx, you set the correct color in Swatchbooks. No more reprints, but always print the right color.